biologist Nicholas McLechi studies sexual reproduction of non-vascular plants like liverworts and mosses. In these species, it's common for females to far outnumber males, and his team wants to figure out how and why. My goals are to understand how the sex ratios of plants differ, or why they differ. I'm interested in the number of males and the number of females in plant populations. And we use several techniques to do that, including field experiments, field observations, greenhouse studies, growth chambers, where we manipulate the environment and try to look for differences between males and females. Even though they are different, how they can persist close to each other so they can actually mate and reproduce. It's basically understanding the differences in terms of life history, how fast they grow, when they start producing reproductive organs, and when they actually mate and how successful they are. One of the things we have figured out is we can make both males and females reproduce within 21 days. We really don't understand the mechanism, but we could manipulate the environment and we can cause males and females to become reproductive like that. That is nice. Right now, I am working on explaining sex ratios and differences in the sexes. We're looking at their morphologies, their physiology, and their life history traits, and connecting those back to selection for being a good male or a good female. So I work with a moss, and it has, they're a little clump-forming moss. The males and females differ in how that their clumps are formed and they're kind of the shape that they are. Females are bigger than males. They have different morphologies in their, their shoots. They hold different amounts of water, so it's really important for their reproduction and their regular life cycle. So uh, it looks as if females are probably more competitive than males, but it's also linked to what makes them a good male or a good female. Females need to get water because they're water fertilized. And males need to lose water to disperse their gametes to the females. What makes them a good male may also make it more likely that they might die. This summer, McLechi and Rose Marks travel to Trinidad for field research. So my project, my dissertation project, is about understanding how some plants can survive without water, uh, which seems like a relevant issue considering uh, there's a lot of drought worldwide. And so we're looking at sort of the ecology of plants that are drought or desiccation tolerant, uh, as well as the molecular mechanism. So trying to understand what genes actually allow them to survive without water. In a side project which is looking at all of the bacteria that colonize these plants and what we found was that there's a lot of nitrogen fixing bacteria that are associated with these plants and typically people think about nitrogen fixing bacteria only being with legumes so beans and peas but we're finding that it's actually um, associated with a much broader range of plants um, including these little bryophytes maybe plants can't even survive without the bacteria and so there's this whole other group of organisms that have gone unnoticed for years, but are really playing an important role. What keeps me going is the fact that every time I see the plant and I look at it and I think I understand it and I'm getting close to understand it, it, it does something that tells me that it knows more about what it's doing than I do. And then I have to start back from the beginning and try to understand again why the plant is behaving the way it does. With the ability to sex express, I can make it happen. But it's very difficult for me to figure out the mechanism because everything people tell me about what should trigger it, the plant is responding a bit differently. So I'm at a loss. So what makes me keep on being excited about it is the mystery and the questions I keep coming to.